And so before we try to solve anything, we need to get clear about what the problem is by asking what we call in positive discipline and empowering people, curiosity questions with a genuine sense of curiosity, not to judgment. Because if we ask with judgment, we're not going to get the information we need in order to move forward with the conflict with understanding. Welcome to Leadership Empowerment with Yogi Patel, the podcast where we dive into the world of leadership and explore various tools that can trans uh, transform many leaders. I know I was one that needed a lot of help, and I'm hopeful that you will get some insights to help you along your journey. And today we have a special episode focusing on conflict resolution, creating a positive work environment, motivating teams leadership styles and why, communicating and listening skills, and managing change. A lot of things going on today. And this is the first podcast for the leadership experience. And I am thrilled that my mentor, an expert in leadership coaching, Dina Emser, she's also a founder of Empowering People in the Workplace, Positive Discipline Lead Trainer, author, and a friend. Welcome, Dina. Thanks, Yoki. My pleasure to be here. So tell us a little bit about your journey. You know, we all have that story of how we began our journey into leadership. Yeah, it's such an interesting question, isn't it? I feel like my mom helped me realize mine started when I was very young. She tells a story about me helping the neighbor across the street get on the bus for the first day of kindergarten. And it just wasn't anything that was a problem. It's like she was crying. I was excited. I just grabbed her by the arm and said, let's go. And away we went. So I feel like that has started me on a path where I can't resist leadership. Opportunities just find me and I always have my hand up. So I've been a teacher. I started my career as a teacher, an elementary school teacher, ended up directing a positive discipline school for 10 years. Then while I was there, I hired my first coach and the coaching industry was very new. It was the late 90s. And so I was so impressed and impacted by that coach that I decided I had to become a certified coach. I thought it would really help me in my leadership role at that point. What happened, it did, but I decided I was done with that and wanted to also jump into the entrepreneurial pool of owning my own business. So I've been coaching uh, training, writing, speaking for a little over 20 years now. And it's definitely the highlight of my life. Yeah, I can see your eyes light up when you coach and when you see the pennies drop for the other person. I know that I've had the pleasure of working with you while leading a school. And when I went to two schools and um, you had created this amazing program that was really helpful. And when we met and when I was in the conversation of being encouraged, I was a better leader. And I just can't imagine any leader working without having some support we and need provide it. that. You know, it's just that, that foundation or that someone that's just got your back, right. that just changes the trajectory of a leader. And I know that your background also is in positive discipline. Can you tell us yeah. How did that journey begin? <laughs> it was so strange. I was actually teaching in public school. Uh, my daughter was enrolled as a kindergartner locally, and we just noticed some changes happening we weren't particularly excited about. I don't know, we felt like the light had kind of gone out of her eyes. We thought, well, let's just look around and see what other possibilities there are. And fortunately for me, there was a private school not too far away, a bit of a drive, but we went and looked. The kids were doing class meetings the day my husband and I visited, and I was sold. It's like I couldn't believe the atmosphere. So we, um, there was no opening for our daughter, so we were just on a list. And then late December, I got a call from the school, and they said, one of our teachers was supposed to just take a six-week leave, is now leaving permanently, and we need a sub in kindergarten. And if you come, we'll also make a spot for Lindy. And I was like, I took a leap. You know, a huge leap 
of faith and joined when I knew nothing about positive discipline other than that one visit to the school. So I learned every day by watching and listening to the other teachers, by meeting with the director, by getting as much Adlerian background training as I could to bring myself up to speed to where I, I, I knew that I needed to make changes. Wow. What a gift for your daughter and yourself and courage to take that leap. And many of us take those leaps without really conscientiously being aware of what we're doing. We just do it out of love. And then we jump into that big pool of lots of stuff. And then, you yeah. know, how we got to figure out it. <laughs> and like, it did, yep. Yeah. But then something must have gelled because an, a year and a half later, the director left and the board asked me to take over. Now, granted, that sounds like a ridiculous ask, right, of the board. But the school was small enough, and I think they just saw potential in the way that I hit the ground running in terms of the learning, and I just loved it so much that it just felt like a natural place for me to be. So then I said yes to that, which then projected my learning and my challenges, you know, by at least 150%. So the continuum of growth and learning and so tells me, I bet in your time in a classroom and leadership positions that you've held and coaching. Let's talk about conflict resolution in leadership. So how would we use positive discipline or the coaching strategies that you have come up with to creating this impactful environment and handling conflict resolution with an outcome that would be somewhat win-win or positive in nature? Absolutely. It needs to be win-win. You know, it just needs to be, even if it doesn't look like it, the atmosphere needs to be, we're not looking for one winner and one loser in this situation. So one thing I know that I learned early on teaching kindergarten and watching kindergartners do class meetings is perception. You know, the perception that one people, one person held, this is a problem and we need to solve it. Looking around at the faces of everybody else in the circle is like, I didn't even know that was a problem. So I think one thing leaders need to understand is that everybody has a different perspective. And so before we try to solve anything, we need to get clear about what the problem is by asking what we call in positive discipline and empowering people, curiosity questions with a genuine sense of curiosity, not judgment. Because if we ask with judgment, we're not going to get the information we need in order to move forward with the conflict with understanding. So that's the first thing I would say in terms of our tools. It's like we need to get over there in the other person's shoes at least long enough to understand A, what's the problem? B, what's the focus? It's like what's the solution we're actually looking for? And C, what role did I have in causing whatever it is that's going on and being open enough and open-hearted enough and genuinely interested enough to, to be able to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Lots going on. Yeah. There's a lot of vulnerability as a leader, but what you just talked about is really putting ourselves in other shoes and then seeing our own part. And that vulnerability piece is huge when you're basically saying, well, and, and if you do figure out what your role is, then how do you, where do you go from there? Well, I think that's the first piece, is understanding your role, understanding the role of others, and also your willingness then to collaborate on a solution. But it's interesting to me how many times we just are thrown into these situations with no training whatsoever about understanding motivation in other people and their different perspectives, understanding how it's not always about us, which is always my assumption. I was like, oh, what did I do? Um, and I'm like overly interested probably and overly committed into taking responsibility when sometimes my biggest thing that I could do is just step back and not jump in. So it, I guess the training piece for me is the part that's just absolutely so essential, which is why empowering people in the workplace is for everyone. Because we can't assume that just because we're adults, we know how to get along together on this playground called life, right? Or the playground called work. Absolutely. And creating some ways to 
perhaps connect with the team, it seems like. So you, we have to first even know the folks that are working around us and a little bit about their perspective or possibly because being understanding other human beings is a very, very confusing and challenging task. And then in the world of now working from home and working in place, some of those challenges can come through. And I appreciate what you said. It's similar to the classroom challenges or challenges we have in our home. How do we solve them? Chances are we have that same theme. That's maybe our go-to knee-jerk reaction that we've learned on how we solve problems that we perhaps learn from our environment and our family. And what you just shared is like having that step-by-step process that just kind of guides us to going outside of how we've always done it to a specific way of figuring out how we're going to solve the problem and having everyone on the same page as how we're going to do this. If you like the content of this video, please don't forget to follow. And also, if you want more information, visit the website yogipatelttte.com.